Okay. Really? You gotta, gotta be, be kidding, kidding me. me. News broke just the other day that the first cruise self-driving car crash has already happened. It happened back on June 3rd. This is going to be equal parts really you've got to be kidding me because hey we all want self well there's a subset of people who want self-driving cars and what do you know the first crash has already happened and it's also going to be an interesting conversation dad because what's happening here is General Motors who owns Cruise is putting out a lot of information to pretty much make it clear that their autonomous car wasn't the one that was at fault. Let's Quickly, though, or briefly kind of roll, uh, run through what happened. This was one day after the state of California awarded Cruise the milestone permit to allow them to commercialize their autonomous driving technology in the state. A two-car accident happened on the night of June 3rd when a cruise vehicle operating, operating in autonomous mode made a left turn in front of an oncoming Toyota Prius at the intersection of Geary Boulevard and Spruce Street. Everyone was okay, but there were injuries to the occupants of both vehicles. Before we get into what GM has said, Pops, I imagine you can't be too surprised that we've had our first autonomous vehicle accident, can you? Well, I uh, no, I'm not surprised by that. Um, I, I am, I am disheartened that uh, you know. I read a little further in that article, and and naturally, um, everybody's trying to point blame to the driver of the Prius, the human person that was driving the Prius and and trying to say it was their fault. Now, having read the article to a certain degree, um, well, the cruise vehicle kind of started to make the left turn and then sort of stopped in the middle of the left turn, and that's when the Prius hit it. So uh, I think this would be a much more interesting story if it was two autonomous vehicles in, in autonomous mode, I don't know, they kind of smacked each other, which which that probably has already happened but has not been reported yet because it took over a month for anybody to report that this actually happened. And it happened on the day after they got the permit to do it. Um, and Justice is 100% right. Of course, human beings have crashes as well. We're not trying to make uh, paint the picture here that it's because it's an autonomous vehicle. It's fascinating because we are going to see more stories like these. And the really you got to be kidding me component is, in my opinion, how GM has responded. I mean, it's just yes. fascinating. Uh, GM said its self-driving vehicle came to a stop in the roadway before completing its left turn and was stationary when struck. The company provided further statements about its interpretation of the position and behavior of the human-driven Toyota Prius and its filing, saying the Prius was speed Speeding and that it had continued straight from a right turn lane. Those details could not be independently verified. This piece is what I think is the really got to be kidding me. Who is going to be responsible for these things? Yeah. The human's going to say one thing and GM's going to say another. Who pays the insurance on this? Who's the claim again? Like that to me is where there's so much that's ambiguous and needs to be honestly disambiguated and made clear how we're going to handle situations like these. And to your point, dad, when two autonomous cars hit each other, is it going to be Uber <laughs> versus cruise? Like who's got a better I, data capture system? How does this, how does this play out? I, I don't know. And, and honestly, you know, when, when I've made left turns, I don't stop in the middle of it. I, 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 you know, uh, as a human, I mean, if you do stop in the middle of it, well, you're just asking to get a hit. It's like, why not just have a giant neon sign on the top of the car that says, hit me. I'm stopped <laughs> in the middle of my turn. Hit me. Um, so, <laughs> yes, I think there's a lot of spin going on. I would love to. I would love to get the interpretation of, say, the driver of the Prius. What did he see? Or he or she see, um, you know, um, did did she, did he or she notice that? I don't know. The cruise vehicle just kind of stopped in the middle of a turn, and if that were the case, which way are you swerving to try and miss it? Uh, would you swerve that's to actually the right because huge... you're figuring it's going to go to the left? So that's actually a huge, um, you know, our cousin Jed. Dad, I've had conversations. What our cousin is. And incredibly smart. He's a, he's a dean at a university and has done research for spinal cord rehabilitation. And very smart guy. And one of the conversations I had with Jed was, okay, when two autonomous cars are driving and they, they have to choose between, do I hit this other car or do I swerve off the road and maybe hit this bicyclist or do I hit this kid? Like, 
how do these systems make those decisions? And and again, justice credit to you, GM has cars on the camera should be easy to verify. 100% agree. There's more cameras. It's going to be easier to to kind of identify what actually happened. How do you program these things to make those decisions? How do you choose between swerving off the road and hitting a bicyclist or do I crash into this other car? We're going to be, and I'm, and I'm not trying to, to abdicate what humans do. Like, I mean, the decision making that we have to do is incredibly difficult if we're ever in a situation like that. How do you teach a machine to do it? It's, it's mind boggling to me. Uh, it, it really is. And I, and, and who's, whose mind is the right mind to pick from? Um, you know, I mean, there are, I don't, I don't want to scare the world, but there are some demented minds out there, and I certainly don't want to use those as a model for artificial intelligence. Um, so how, how, how does artificial de- intelligence determine what's right and what's wrong? I mean, because in some people's world, what's wrong might be right, and what's right might be wrong. Um, so, and and if, if as a people, we can't agree on on any of that, well, how the hell is the artificial intelligence supposed to do it? Uh, it's just mind-boggling to me. Hey, you get to declare your independence from high prices from auto dealers. Join YAA. Get 15% off. Just type in July and the number four. So we did a video that went out on the YAA channel just yesterday talking about refinancing a loan. It was really interesting because um, the gentleman in our community saved $2,200 by refinancing his loan. So I've been doing a lot of research recently on how refinancing works because I think it's super incredible that you can save $2,200 and money goes right back into your pocket or at least is taken off the principal. So as I was doing this research that I came across a couple companies that do this. We're not going to name names during this really you've got to be kidding me segment. But you need to be careful when you do a refinance. Do you know how refinance companies make money, Dad? Um, They mark up the rate just like uh, the dealer does, I'm assuming. So it's tricky because you can't mark up the rate too much because you have to have a lower rate than what the consumer already has. You attach F&I products because you're placing a new loan. I'm going to mm-hmm. share my screen. We're going to look at a couple of reviews that I was able to find. And this is just a, you know, a counterbalance to yesterday's video on the YAA channel. It's great that refinance is a very logical thing to do, something that we endorse mm-hmm. and, and suggest people should do. Be weary of things like these. This had to be the worst refinancing experience possible. The process was almost painful and the result was worse. I was lied to. There was a $400 fee to do the refinance. They added Gap and a, quote, cosmetic package were never discussed with me prior to the refinance. I agreed to the Gap and cosmetic package at an extra $41 a month. Upon receiving one, just one piece of paper regarding my loan with my new lender, I had seen the total of the refinance at a 7% less APR than my previous lender was $2,053 more than my higher, higher APR lender. Basically, my auto, my automobile was put in a negative equity state, valued at approximately seventeen thousand two hundred dollars, while having a previous payoff amount of fifteen thousand two hundred eighty-eight dollars. You do the math when the total of my new loan was seventeen thousand three hundred forty-one dollars. Once again, one piece of paper for my new lender. Um, as for all these other options I was presented with, I thought that the gap in cosmetic package would just increase my monthly payment, just tacked on as a separate fee, not increase the payoff amount of my vehicle. This refinance basically erased 2000 in payments to my previous lender, yada, yada, yada. So there's one example, Dad, of how getting a refinance, in theory, is a great idea. Paying $400 for it, eh, don't like the sound of that. Mm-mm. Getting other packages that the dealership tries to sell you added on, don't like the sound of that. Got to be weary of these things. Wary, yes, you must be wary of those things. And and yes, they. I mean, those items. Interest is charged on those items. So, my suggestion when it comes to refinance at this point, go to your local credit union or go to your local bank and see what kind of rates you can get there. And if if there are going to be packages they'll discuss them with you they won't just add them and they're not going to charge you a 399 dollar fee just to refinance that that's like that 399 is just pure profit that is like a dealer doc fee um 
you know, that's their basically loan origination fee. That's just money going in their pocket. 